What is up YouTube? It is Roadrun and I back with another video. This video has been super anticipated by you guys. You guys keep asking me questions about Prime and wanting to know how I like it and how much I'm getting paid and the truck payments and the loads and all types of stuff. So we're just gonna kind of briefly go over everything in this video. I have only been working there a month so I did want to wait it out a little bit longer like maybe like three four months in but i have been getting so many questions that i just figured that i would put out a video for you guys um as to why i chose to lease as well that's another big thing so the first thing that we're going to go over i just want to quickly say like it is obviously my personal journey that i choose to share with you guys so all of the people that are super against leasing and everything i feel you i understand and I don't know what to tell you because that's what I myself chose to do. I'm not telling anybody to go out and lease. I understand if you are against it. I once was against it as well. Well, I wouldn't say against it. I just was not informed on it. I didn't really know enough about it. And yeah, so the reason that I chose to lease, let's just get into that first. So I chose to lease because companies kept playing with me. If you guys have been watching me on YouTube, you know I just, I wasn't making enough to be out there. I run like crazy, you guys. I'm the type of person, if I can run my full clock out, I will, and I'm up before my 10 hours is over so that I'm ready by my 10 hour break. I take my job like seriously. I don't, I'm not out here to just fool around and make YouTube videos. I'm out here to work and make money. And I just feel like companies, Either they have too many drivers, not enough loads for all the drivers, too many trucks, I don't know what it was, but it just wasn't working for me. So that is why I chose to lease. So not only I can make my own decisions when it comes to stuff, I'm not forced to go places. I'm not forced to do anything because I am a lease driver now. So if I don't wanna take a load, I can decline it. If I don't wanna be in a certain area, I can just tell my fleet manager, hey, I don't wanna go to that area right now, can you keep me in this area? If I um, want to take a vacation, I can take a vacation whenever I want. I don't have to give a crazy amount of time before I can take a vacation. So there is a lot of pros to it. And there's also obviously cons. There's pros and cons with everything. It depends on the person. What will work for you might not work for me. What works for me might not work for you. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to go over everything because I have been getting a lot of questions. So um, that is why I chose to lease myself. Also, a lot of people do not know this because I don't talk about it, but I basically I make money off of YouTube so I use my YouTube money as my personal money that's my money for my bills that's my money that um, I spend on stuff that can't be a write-off for my business that's the money that I use you know so I'm very thankful for the opportunities that you know you guys give me for watching me and supporting me and yeah, so I just want to put that out there because a lot of people are like, Shania, this is not the time to lease. And I understand that the market is not good, but Prime keeps me running and the load rates that they have are pretty decent, which I'm going to get into all of that as well with you guys. But that is kind of something that I wanted to put out there as well. So my trucking money goes into a business account and I am i don't really touch it like that. I live off of YouTube money. So that is another reason why I did choose to lease. Um... For the second reason is because of the fact that I was so tired of being a company driver. So it was like really between lease or full on owner op, like just buy a truck and do it that way. The truck that I want to buy is very expensive. So I would have went into debt and the rates right now are not good for owner operators for the most part. So it just wasn't a smart decision. That is why I went lease. So now I'm able to learn how to manage fuel sorry you guys i have the hiccups and i'm like trying to hold them in but leasing i can learn how to manage my fuel i can get more insight on the industry as a whole like the trucking industry and i can run how i want to run so that is the main reasons why i chose to lease there is two different lease options with prime with a lot of companies that offer lease there is two different lease options not everyone but a lot of them so let's get into that because a lot of people are misinformed on this as well and I just want to put it out there because again I have a lot of people coming at me a certain way and being negative about situations and like I said it is my journey you guys do not have to if you don't want to watch it you don't have to like I'm not forcing anybody to lease I'm just telling you guys 
my story. So there's two types. I'm in a lease. I'm in a regular lease, a walkaway lease, you guys. So my credit is not attached. I am not purchasing this truck. It is not even, I don't want to purchase the truck. Like I'm just in a lease, you guys. Yes, I pay a truck payment and we'll get into that after this. The second option is a lease purchase. That is, you put money down. I believe Prime, you put $5,000 down to start. I could be wrong because again, I'm not in it, but I believe it's $5,000, okay? Then your credit is, credit is attached. So you cannot just walk away. You are binded to this truck. You are, if you don't purchase this truck, it's gonna mess up your credit, okay? That is the difference between a walkaway lease and a lease purchase. Yes, at the end of a walkaway lease, you most likely will owe money if you do not finish your lease because our first week, our payment is deferred. That deferred money, they're not just gonna let you get away with not paying. You're gonna owe that, you're gonna owe whatever mileage you put on the truck, you're gonna owe if you ruined the truck in certain areas, if stuff needs to be fixed, you're gonna owe that. So it's not like it's a cut clean, just walk away all the time, because it's not, and I understand that, but that is the difference between those two things. So I, again, am in a lease, a walk away lease, but lease purchase are the people that are purchasing the truck, okay? Those are like the Prime trucks that don't say Prime all over it and it just says operated by Prime. Those are those trucks. So, yeah. Next, um, let's talk about the truck payment. So, my truck, I have a 2024 Peterbilt and my truck I pay $12.25 a week for. I know, that sounds crazy. You're like $12.25 a week? Like not a month, a week. Yes. Truck payments at Prime are super high, at a lot of places are super high. Um, some places less high than others, of course, but Prime does have crazy payments. The thing is though, you guys, I know it sounds crazy, but the money that you make, it really like balances out somehow, some way. So it sounds crazy, that's why I never was into it before, but and a lot of people will be like, oh, well you're making the payment for the company, and I'm aware of that, I understand that. But it's just like anything else in life. If you go lease a car, you're making the payment and then you're giving the car back. If you go rent an apartment, you're paying off somebody else's investment. The, how much money you can make lease is something that you will never see company driving you guys. So there's pros and cons, like I said. Some people take the risk, some people don't. For me, it was just something that I just wanted to do before I buy my own truck because I want to be able to get more inside the industry than I can company driving and kind of understand certain aspects of it. But yeah, so the company, um, or the payment is $12.25 a week, plus everything else on top of it is about another like $2.25. So yeah, because we pay for the Qualcomm, the tablet that we use, we pay for that, we pay for tolls, we pay for mileage pay, we pay insurance, we pay for the APU. Um, there's quite a few other charges that we pay for. So everything else on top of it is about like 225, 250 a week about. And yeah, it is a lot of money per week. So that can scare a lot of people in and of itself because it's like, dang, that's a lot of money. But again, you guys, I promise like it evens out on a, like, you're going to make really good money some weeks you're gonna make really bad money some weeks that's the scary part but company driving you will never like make money nowadays like especially with mega carriers smaller companies yes you can make money personally i couldn't find smaller companies that wanted to take me with less than two years of experience like i just had no luck in finding a good company so that is why i chose to lease with prime you guys and yeah so i do want to just go over something really fast I just want to go over my best paycheck with them and worst paycheck with them I'm not really gonna get into the whole numbers of the load scenarios and everything with it I just want to give you guys the net amount that I made and then move past it because I feel like I haven't worked here long enough to really get into it too deep because I don't want to scare anybody off I don't want to like you know give you guys wh whatever and I'm not gonna do okay no never mind so let's get into it I'm also going to let you guys know why the worst week that I've had so far happened because I will say that it was just a bad week. It was just everything that could go wrong went wrong. So let's get into it. My best week, I made $3,458.55 net, okay? That was a week where I was getting loaded 
or unloaded and then loaded again right away. That was a week where it wasn't much sitting. That was a week where everything worked out, okay? Last week was a horrible week because, hold on, I'll get into the because after I tell you what it was. After everything was said and done, my net was, where is it? $682.10, okay? So, here's why. <laughs> so, if you guys watched my last few videos, I had a Cali load, okay? I had got unloaded at a Walmart in, where was I? I don't remember where I was, shoot. I was at a Walmart DC somewhere, I got unloaded, and in Nevada, in Nevada. I was picking up in Ontario, Oregon, okay? By the time Walmart unloaded me, they took like six hours to unload me. By the time I was unloaded, I was gonna be late to pick up. So I contacted Night Dispatch. First mess up, Night Dispatch, no matter what the company, sucks. Like no matter the company, Night Dispatch never wants to do their job. I don't know what they're doing in there, but it's not their job. And so I contacted them and I told them what was going on. That's where I first messed up because I shouldn't have even still accepted this load. I should have just asked for a new load where I knew that I could make the pickup on time. And long story short, I ended up, they ended up saying that it was fine, changed the appointment time on the Prime app to make it look like on my ha on my part that it was noon to three o'clock instead of just noon. I get there at 2 p.m. the next day when the appointment should have been in the window, right? And the person at the desk was like, oh no, like we're strictly appointment. You would have had to be here at noon to be on time. And made me wait three days to get loaded and with all that sitting that was already half my week once i'm loaded my appointment time they didn't have a set appointment anymore because it was so late from the shipper so the receiver didn't even give us an appointment yet i drove all the way out there and then my dispatch tells me oh like the appointment is the 24th which was a week away from the current date you guys so i was like okay well I can't sit on this load for a week because it already wasn't paying me that much. So I asked them, I'm like, okay, well, I need to bring it somewhere or get it, you know, repowered. Something needs to happen because this is ridiculous. And they made me bring it 450 miles down to Fontana, California to a drop yard. So that load, you guys, basically took up my entire week and just messed everything up and yeah. So what I learned from that is do not take a load if you do not have ample time to get there and to get to the shipper and the receiver. So your trip planning really has to be good in order to not lose large amounts of money because if I would have just asked for a new load, I would have been fine. Like, I would have potentially made way more money that week than I did staying with that load, getting there late, even though I thought that I was on time because they made it seem like I was on time with the appointment window. And, yeah, so that's what I learned. Just make sure that you have a lot of time to get there to the shipper and receiver because if you don't, you will screw yourself over because when they work you in, they will take their time. They will literally take days to work you in. And you just don't want to do that to yourself, not as a lease operator, because it was just ridiculous. So that is what I learned from that. And like I said, you will have great weeks. You will have not so great weeks. It's the same in company driving. If you're sitting a lot, those companies that I worked for before, they wouldn't even give me detention pay or anything, even when I'm asking for it and stuff. So I don't know. Like, I don't really have a good, I never had good luck when it came to companies so I'm enjoying this leasing life I love the fact that I can literally decline a load if I don't want to go so right now I just got out of West Coast and I told my fleet manager like hey I just want to stay east or mid east don't send me west anymore because one winter's about to hit in the mountains and highways out there like I-70 I-80 and everything you guys say it all the time too like that's not somewhere where I want to be when it's really bad outside so if the money isn't crazy, crazy good, I'm not going out there right now. So I told my fleet manager that the other day, and now I've been staying more mid-east, northeast, like Tennessee, Indiana, Missouri, um, places like that. That's where I've been lately. So it really, like, that's why I like leasing too, because you can communicate with them what you want and what you don't want, and they will make it happen because you're your own boss, technically. So that is how 
lease is going for me that's like the payments and everything i'm trying to think of more questions that you guys have some cons about this though i will say with prime are the super singles i just <laughs> i don't understand why they use super single tires so instead of dual tires with bud rims they have one big tire which it's just not good when it comes to wind um you get thrown around a lot more i find than you would um with bud rims or dual tires uh so yeah i just don't like the single uh super singles that's one thing i really am not fond of also the loads are super heavy which isn't too much of an issue but like people who lease purchase that's on you because i think about it all the time i'm like dang these loads are so heavy that these trucks are really going through it like I don't think most of the loads are like between like 37 and like 42,000. That's pretty heavy loads compared to what I was used to. I mean, yeah, every now and then I will get a heavy load before, but like we also had a lot of loads company driving that would be like 30,000, you know, 20 something thousand. But no, a lot of these loads are on the heavier side. So it definitely is a lot of wear and tear on the truck, you know, over time. So that's another thing, obviously going up hills and stuff. Let's talk about what the truck is governed to because everybody's like, oh my god, Prime is the slowest truck out there. Prime is so slow. Everybody passes them. Da -da 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 -da. So, as a lease driver, the trucks are still governed at 65. I know. I know. It's kind of crazy. They probably should up it to 70 because it's like, if we're paying the truck payment, like, don't you think you should up it a little bit? Like, y'all can at least up the govern to like 70 on lease trucks company trucks i think go like 62 or 63 or whatever the case is so a lot of people do not lease through prime because their trucks are governed at 65 i understand that completely i'm used to going 65 as a company driver that's all i could ever do it doesn't really bother me that much because i'm used to it and just because of the fact that it just helps me at the end of the day on fuel mileage because whatever a truck can go i'm gonna go it you know as long as it's the speed limit so it's like it doesn't bother me. I know that does bother a lot of people. So I did want to mention that though, because that's like people's number one reason why they don't chose to get, choose to go with Prime because we're at 65 and most lease operators are at 70. But yeah, you guys, so that is how leasing has been going for me. I'm just learning as the days go on. I will quickly actually go over a few of like the loads just that I've been getting just to give you guys a little, you know, feel for the load. So let's go over the one that I just got dispatched on. Okay. I'm picking it up in Greenfield, Indiana. I'm dropping it off at Blue Ash, Ohio. Okay. 19 miles empty. 117 miles loaded so that is how many miles together oh wait no 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 98 miles loaded 19 empty 117 miles together okay i'm getting paid 703 dollars and 87 cents that's literally seven dollars a mile okay to go 100 miles and it's a preloaded trailer on top of it so that's the load that i have for today Next, I have, let's see, this one was an okay load. Um, it was 300 total miles for $900, so that's, that's still $3 a mile. And um, also, oh wait, let me just, let me just go over one more, let's see, this load was Eh, it was okay. Um, this was to get me out of where I was, though, because they didn't have loads really coming out of there. And he was trying to make it so that I didn't have the deadhead very far. So this was 491 miles and... Oh, wait, no, 622 miles. And it was paying me $1,100. So that's still pretty decent, though, compared to, you know... Some of these lease operators make like a dollar something a mile base. It's not percentage. Prime is percentage. So you get 72% of the load revenue. So it all depends on what the load's paying them. So I'm not, I don't get paid per mile. Um, let's do 
this one was the one that I vlogged, California to Missouri. Uh, let's see. It was 1,500 miles, and my revenue was 3,600, 3, a little over 3,600. So that was a good load. Um, so yeah, most of the times you're making at least $2 a mile, you guys. And they also do fuel surcharge. So we're not only getting like line charge, like, um, what's it called? Why can't I think of it? What is it called? La um, line haul. We're not only getting line haul like revenue, we're also getting fuel surcharge. On top of fuel surcharge, fuel surcharge is basically them charging the customer for the fuel that we're using. So it doesn't cover all your f fuel usually, but it covers enough to make a difference. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. And then on top of all that, Prime also gets really good discounts with a lot of the um, truck stops for fuel. So you can just go on the Prime app and look under like fuel and services and it will show you the price of the fuel that you're getting. So most times you're not paying the price of the fuel at the pump, you're paying whatever Prime's discount is. So that is another thing about them that I find is really cool because again, a lot of these companies that offer leasing only pay you a dollar something a mile, don't have fuel surcharge. Like how do you make money like that? That's why I was against leasing for so long until I looked into Prime because I feel like Prime has one of the best lease like best options for leasing because of like they actually care about their drivers unlike uh, other companies so yeah one more thing that i want to go over is trailers because a lot of people have misconceptions about trailers a lot of people don't understand the whole trailer situation because we lease the truck do we lease a trailer do we get different trailers how does that work okay we are not, as lease operators, we are not attached to trailers in any sort of way. We do not pay anything for the trailer except diesel. So if I go pick up this preloaded trailer that I'm going to get later, if I go pick this trailer up and it doesn't have diesel in it or it only has a quarter or whatever, I can go fill that trailer up and if I fill it up right away, I get that money back. So they will give me the first fuel up that you get or that you do on a trailer, as long as it's within like 200 miles, you will get that diesel back, the money back. Um, so the only thing that we're paying if we have like a long haul or something um, is the diesel in the trailer. We aren't paying for anything to be fixed on the trailer. We aren't paying trailer rental, whatever. Like I've heard people say that you pay rent on Prime's trailers and stuff. No. I don't know if it does, if um, lease to purchase people have to do that. I doubt it. Uh, but as like a walkaway lease, no, we don't, we don't pay anything when it comes to the trailer, you guys. We don't pay any repairs, tires, anything wrong with the trailer, any trailer washouts we don't pay. So that's another thing that I just wanted to throw out there because, again, a lot of people just don't really know what they're talking about when it comes to stuff like this. And it's completely fine if you're not informed, but like sorry but i just want to inform people and let people know because i think that prime the lease option through prime is actually a very good option for people that want to run now lease is not a good option if you don't run good if you want to go home a lot if you want to take vacations all the time if you um are constantly hitting things if you know stuff like that like as long as you can upkeep your vehicle keep your vehicle in good condition stay on the road as much as you can because it, when you take off you still have a truck payment so if you get in the hole it's very hard to get out of i've heard anyway the hole being like if you go take two weeks off they're not going to charge you the two weeks payment like up front like you're not going to take that straight out of your bank account it's going to be deferred to your next so when you get back to work you're gonna owe all that money back so you're gonna have weeks where you're not making anything if you're in the hole so that's another thing to think about you guys don't come lease if you want to go home a lot i do not go home i live in my truck i got rid of my apartment in november um so that is another reason why i chose to lease because i know how to run and yeah it just it's working out for me so far i love it so far i love my truck um 
I don't have an issue with my fleet manager. Everything is just going smoothly. I'm happy with how it is all going. Uh, yeah, you guys, I think that is about everything that I can think just off the top of my head. Um, if I did miss anything, go ahead and put it in the comments. Any other questions that you guys do have. Um, and obviously, every week is going to differ. Everybody's I always tell you guys, everybody's scenario is going to be different. You're going to make different pay than me. Our loads are going to be different. Our fleet managers are going to be different. So all that I can really tell you guys is my side of everything. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, though, I just wanted to briefly come on and just let you guys know how it's going and everything. Um, I am trying to balance like work and YouTube and stuff, but I have been pretty busy running with them. So I'm sorry that I have been a little not so active as I was last month. Um, but you guys know last month I wasn't working. I was doing like orientation and driving and I was creating a lot of content for you guys because there was a lot of stuff to be made. But like I said, they have been running me. Sorry, here's a water bottle. They have been running me a lot. So I'm doing the best that I can with content. You guys can also comment content ideas that you have or want to see. Um, but other than that, that is going to be it for this video. And yeah, if you guys do want to come over to Prime and look into leasing or have any more questions, you can reach out to me. Um, my Instagram and everything is always here. I'm not really good at looking at Instagram DMs. You're better off probably commenting any questions and stuff like that. But I will leave my referral code as well in um, the description box. And I might also put it just in the corner of the screen. That way you guys can see it if you want to use it. Because I do have people ask me for it. And yeah, y'all. That is it for the video. Thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace.